Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Wanda Curley, your authority on project program and portfolio management. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by PM Powered, your uh, consulting uh, business on project program and portfolio management. This week, I'm going to talk to you about AI, artificial intelligence, and kind of machine learning. Um, there's uh, an article by Gartner. I want to give you a little bit of background on AI before I actually get into some projects that I'm going to talk about. But uh, according to Gartner, about 70% of digital com- uh, percent of digital commerce organizations surveyed reported that their AI projects are very successful or extremely successful, which I found kind of interesting because I would have thought it would be lower because AI is so new into business. But it's nice to hear that it's about 70%. So Gartner conducted a survey of about 307 uh, digital commerce organizations that are currently using or planning on using uh, or, or piloting AI. They're not planning. They already are using it. And they understand its adoption, value, success, and challenges of AI and digital commerce. So three quarters of the respondents said they see double-digit growth, which I found very interesting. Um, And when I say double-digit growth, I mean double-digit improvements, and it's in three areas. In customer satisfaction, they saw a 19% increase. In revenue, they saw 15%. And in cost reduction, they saw 15%. So that's, that's clearly good numbers. You have double digits, that's excellent. And when you have 70% that are successful, that's absolutely incredible to me. Gartner predicts that by 2020, AI will be used in 60% of digital commerce and organizations, and that 30% of the digital commerce revenue growth will be attributed to AI technologies. So you can see that AI is now a part of business. And by 2020, which was only uh, two years away, it'll be uh, 30% of, 60% of the digital commerce. Um, it's astounding to me. Um, Gartner goes on to say that digital commerce is a fertile ground for AI technologies thanks to an abundance of multidimensional data and commerce-facing and back-office design, uh, said Sandy Shen who is a research director at Gartner, so it is attributable to Gartner. Despite early success, digital commerce organizations face significant challenges implementing AI. Um, What are those challenges? So the survey said there's a lack of quality training data, 29% of them said that, and in-house skills, there's 27% are the top challenges in deploying AI. I found this interesting because it seems to me that these organizations that are big into AI should be training their in-house staff to uh, adopt AI and to develop AI internally. Um, They also, um, and maybe they need to uh, implement that training internally if they can't find quality training. And again, if they do the training, then the in-house skills will come up. So I'm a little bit perplexed that organizations aren't willing to invest the training in their own people, um, but Maybe time will tell, and that'll uh, end up uh, being something of the past. Uh, Let's see. On average, 43% of the respondents chose to custom build the solutions developed in-house or by a service provider. In comparison, 63% of the more successful organizations are leveraging a commercial AI solution. And again, um, 43% are doing it in-house, but the more successful are doing it are outsourcing it which again, I find interesting, but if AI is not core to your um, core products, then uh, it probably makes sense to outsource the AI. Um, Organizations are, uh, Gartner goes on to say, organizations looking to implement AI and digital commerce need to start simple. I say that with any new technology, start simple and then become more complex. Many have high expectations for AI and set multiple business objectives for a single project, making it too uh, complex to deliver high performance. Many also run AI projects for more than 12 months, meaning they are unable to quickly apply lessons learned from one project to another. So lessons learned there. Uh, They need to make the AI projects simple. They need to make them so they're um, implemented in less than 12 months so you can use the lessons learned. 
and they're making them too complex, make the goals on the, on the projects less complex. So make them one or two goals instead of making them five or six. Um, good things, on average, respondents said that there's $1.3 million in development for an AI project in digital com com commerce. Uh, however, the successful organizations, 52% spent less than a million on development and 20% spent one to two million and 9% spent more than five million. So there you have it on a little background on AI according to Gartner. So let's go to the next um, article that I found, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, again, this one's by Forbes uh, and it was written by Jeff Catlin. And it says, why data scientists are your AI project's biggest enemies? So I found this interesting because I thought data scientists would be important. And the article does say that it is important, but, but let's go into a little bit more depth on this article. It, it says that it's obvious that machine learning can exist without data scientists, and I think we'll all agree with that. But some of the part, uh, patterns um, that Jeff has noticed recently suggest that maybe it can't live with them either. Data scientists may be working in, to advance a machine learning and artificial intelligence, but in dis, doing so, they're working at cross purposes with their employers. The results aren't sustainable. Um, to see why, we only have to compare how data scientists work with how others in tech do, software engineers, for example. So software engineers have learned to use um, software libraries and services. And like that, they're not recreating the wheel every time they start a project. This is not true with uh, data scientists. They often avoid using existing tools and services. There are a bunch of reasons for this, and many of them aren't the fault of the data scientists. However, if the data scientists don't start using the libraries that they have for AI and machine learning, then there's not going to be a maturity of those. Right now, these uh, data libraries and um, are relatively new and they are not sophisticated and they lack um, an organizational understanding of how AI works. So therefore, these, these data scientists are starting from scratch every time they do an uh, AI machine learning project. And again, this is not sustainable. The tools are rel relatively unsophisticated and that's why these scientists are saying that they don't use it. But unless they start using them, the tools in the software libraries are not be going to become more sophisticated. So I implore data scientists to start using them, um, maybe as a backup, so that these uh, data libraries and the tools can become more sophisticated. So uh, that's a, a challenge out to all the data scientists out there working on AI and machine learning. You need to start um, implementing tools and start using the tools that are available and start providing feedback so that the organizations that do these, soft, these uh, AI libraries and tools can become more sophisticated. That's how software engineers will end up with great software libraries because they were willing to look at it and redo it again. So let's go into what are some of the AI projects for 2018 and why they're pushing the envelope. Um, this is, a again, an article that was written based on um, a Gartner. So we're talking a lot about Gartner in, in this week. But what will AI look like in 2018? And we're almost done with 2018. So I thought this was a good time to talk about this article. So in search CIO interviews with IT leaders at DBS Bank, Dun & Bradstreet and State Street and the city of Boston on 2018 uh, plans, the strong consensus was for more not less investment in AI projects, suggesting AI's enterprise trajectory is still on an upward slope. And I think it will be for a while. Recent research from Gartner backs up this trend. The consulting firm predicts that in just two years, 85% of the CIOs will be piloting AI projects through a combination of buy, build, and outsource efforts. Uh, indeed, the big AI story for 2018 may not be who is or who isn't investing in AI, but which companies have effective strategies at handling AI's proliferation. And that's one of the problems with some of the CIOs. Uh, AI is still kind of in its infancy, although it's taking off. And the CIOs are having a, a difficult time understanding to plot an effective AI strategy because it's kind of a chicken and egg problem for CIOs. 
So the challenges for creating an AI strategic development plan parallels the staffing challenges as having AI savvy workers, and we talked about that in the first article that I um, presented, that there's lack of tr good training for AI and lack of the skill sets needed for AI within companies. And executive benefits organizations actively working to set strategy. So they don't know how to set the strategy for AI because, again, it's still understanding what AI can do for their companies. So actions to grapple with both con constraints will reveal the organizations that are striving to improve their understanding of what AI is best suited for and how to employ it. So Anthony, and I'm going to probably butcher his last name, Scriffin Nano, who is the chief data scientist at Dun & Bradstreet, agrees that a big part of setting an AI strategy in 2018 will be figuring out how technologies will be employed across the enterprise and who decide. So is that a CIO plan? or uh, this is me talking now, is that a CIO plan? Is it a CEO plan? Is it a CTO plan? But I think it needs to be an, how do I put this? It needs to be a discussion among all the whole C-suite to decide what the AI machine learning strategy will be. We need to understand that in the C-suite or else it's, there's going to be a tug of war and you're not going to end up having a strategy that makes sense for the organization. So here I'm going to talk about three IT executives who already have a plan in place for 2018. So the first one is called Making Superhumans. And this is the city of Boston. The CIO, Joshua Franklin Hodge, said his AI strategy for the coming year focuses on identifying what AI can do for municipal employees and constituents. He's not looking at downsizing employees. He's looking more at making the employees more superhuman, which I thought that was an incredible way of doing that. And to do this, you have to understand neuroscience. If you don't understand neuroscience, it's very difficult to make your employees superhuman with AI because you have to understand how the AI works with the employees to make them superhuman. So some of the things that he plans on using to make his employees superhuman and do machine learning is to automate processes such as classifying 311 calls. So again, you have to understand the way the people work within your, people uh, use their neuroscience skills within the, uh, within the city, and this will help with the 311 calls. Because if you don't understand neuroscience, you can't really implement how 311 calls will be brought into your uh, uh, call volumes. So the team is also exploring how AI can help the city get a better handle on serious urban issues, including finding the person in a group of opioid users who might be more responsive than an intervention. So again, you have to understand neuroscience. If you don't understand how people that are addicted to opioids think and which ones do better at intervention, then you can't do this AI learning. Uh, another thing that they're doing is identifying where food safety violations are most likely to occur. Um, again, that's understanding how different uh, food suppliers, uh, such as restaurants, and the owners of those restaurants think. Because there's going to be some uh, owners of restaurants that uh, put safety as a number one concern and others that are not. And understanding the neuroscience behind this will help them identify those uh, owners of restaurants and other food supply hospitals as well. Uh, predicting where and when traffic accidents are likely to happen. Uh, again, that's just crunching the data at different uh, intersections, but that's a good place to understand that. These AI projects generate the sort of data that could be used by city employees to plan and prioritize the work they're doing. That's an excellent way of using AI. And people keep on thinking that AI is going to downsize them out of a job. Well, that's probably true for some employees, um, but there's going to be so many new employee uh, um, jobs that are going to be created that we don't even understand. By 2030, we won't even understand the landscape because AI and machine learning will have made so many different uh, jobs um, and the way that employers uh, use employees that it won't even, the landscape will be completely different. So we'll have to even understand neuroscience within employers um, because they're going to have to understand how their employees work with AI. And if they don't, their AI won't be successful. So let's go to the next um, 
uh, CIO here. And this one is David Gledhill, and he's from DBS Bank. And he's working on robotic process automation in action. So, other, um, so DBS Bank Limited is in Singapore, and they want to push the AI envelope. So our, David uh, Gledhill is a driving force for emerging tech, having helped pioneer the company's DigiBank in India, a mobile-only bank where accounts can be opened at one of 600 cafe coffee day locations and managed by a mobile app. Uh, we all have mobile apps right now for our banking, but can you imagine going into a cafe and opening uh, an account? That would be extraordinary to me. Um, and so uh, I assume these are internet cafes, so this is a great idea of doing that. That wouldn't happen or well here in the United States because we really don't have internet cafes, but ev evidently David Gledhill knows his consumer and knows what is needed in different countries, and my hat's off to him. So one of the signature features of the DigiBank is the AI-powered virtual assistant that provides 24-hour customer service. Can you imagine that? 24-hour customer service, and it's all provided by AI. In 2018, DBS will continue to integrate AI into its IT roadmap, building out its voice biometrics program, where a human's unique voice print is used to identify a customer. So you don't have to remember all of these passwords. You don't have to put in your um, fingerprint. It's done by your voice imprint. To me, that's absolutely amazing. And they're doing this with IBM with the robotic process automation. It is the first large-scale implementation in the financial services sector in Singapore and the region, Gledhill said. Through this program, mundane and repetitive tasks are automated, freeing up our employees to do more high-value work. And that's what AI and machine learning is going to do. It's going to let employees do more high-value uh, work. That's what I kept on saying about project managers. If we can get AI and machine learning into our tools, then the machine learning and the AI can do the mundane tasks, while you as the project manager can do the value add. Um, and that's where we as project managers need to uh, keep on pushing the tools and the vendors to do this because right now we're doing so, so much of the mundane that we don't have time to do the value add. So let's go to the last uh, of the CIOs. This is, he does three AI buckets and beyond. And this is with State Street Corporation. Um, it's a Boston-based financial institution, and they're working on very specific problems that need to have machine learning capabilities, says Moise Kohari, a senior vice president and chief technology architect. So he's not a CIO. He's the chief technology architect. He wasn't willing, actually, to say exactly what they were doing, but he was willing to say that they are working in three different areas. And these three areas are natural language processing. That's sort of what we saw with DBS Bank. Anomaly detection and predictive analytics. This is actually a lot of where many companies are putting their AI into anomaly detection and predictive analytics. I don't know that they're really doing it on natural language processing, but that would be very good for the type of business that he's in. But like I said, anomaly detection and predictive analytics are very good and it would be great for project management and program management and portfolio management as well. If we could get that built into uh, our tools, that would be excellent. Can you imagine, um, so Kohari goes on to say, can, you can imagine the types of problems that banks deal with on a daily basis. We have millions of trades coming in. They propagate through hundreds of systems. We are constantly uh, reconciling these systems. So what can I do to assist with that, he said. So when you're thinking about this, think about governments that uh, look over banking uh, regulations and laws. They can also use AI and uh, machine learning to help with uh, managing banks and understanding if they're staying within the regulations and laws that have been put out there for banks. So it's a two-way street. It can be done for business and it can be done for government. The Where we can go with AI and machine learning is just bound by what we can do creatively. So I think we have CIOs and CTOs and CEOs that are very creative out there, but they learn, need to learn to work together and understand how to come up with a strategic focus for AI, 
again, AI is so new, it's hard for them to understand where AI will be in five years. But those CIOs and CEOs and CTOs that can see AI in five years will be those that will excel and their companies will be far more advanced than those that cannot. I'm Wanda Curley, your authority on project program and portfolio management. Uh, this, was, this podcast was brought to you by PM Powered, uh, your consulting company on project program and portfolio management. Please go to PM Current and uh, link up to my LinkedIn, Twitter account, um, Facebook, and YouTube. I'd love to have you following me on those areas. Um, have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you in the uh, next week. Also, if you have worked on any AI project, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, please contact me at wanda at pmpowered.com. Have a blessed week.